do do theme song. Hello, welcome to Left of the Box, Let's Talk. Bonjour, bienvenue, I'm Sandy. This week I've been busy with another creative project, so I wanted to work on a video that wouldn't require me to do too much digging into. A story popped up about Doug Ford saying something horrendous, which isn't surprising in the least, and I was going to let it slide because the opportunity to talk about his misogyny is an ongoing option. Then I read a couple tweets and turns out anger is a good motivator for videos. Do you know what would help calm me down? By hitting that like button and subscribing if you haven't already. Also, you can follow me on the Outrage Generator Twitter at Sandy Loves. There are a couple people in the Canadian political YouTube verse that many of you may know about. Christo Avalaeus and David Dole. I'll admit it. I've been a fan of theirs for a long time. I was David's 500th Patreon member back when that was an important benchmark for him and back when I had money. And I recently had an email exchange with Christo and he was super kind and helpful. I admire them and I inspire to someday be as successful as them. They are smart, strong, progressive voices and they have influence. If you haven't already, please subscribe to their channels. Link in the description box. Given how many views I typically have per video, I'd say, guys, over the next week, three of your new subscribers, they're from me. I guess it's because I like them so much. That's why I got so mad when I saw their tweets on this subject. You have no idea how much this next part hurts me, but guys, I'm calling you out. Here are the tweets. Since when has nails on a chalkboard been universally viewed as sexist? Ford is a horrible premier. There's no need to waste political capital on policing a benign turn of phrase. The apolitical people we need rolled their eyes at crap like this. Crystal follows by saying, it's based on the notion of women as shrill, high-pitched complainers. Not the biggest Ford issue, but I heard the dog whistle. In the first part of David's tweet, he questions whether the phrase nails on a chalkboard is sexist. The answer to that is, when used in this context towards a woman, yes. There are many phrases that aren't inherently sexist or racist, but when used in certain contexts by certain people, they absolutely are. David made a video about this, which I'll get to, and he mentioned that he Googled the phrase and didn't find anything relevant. Why not ask women what we think? Why not show women the video, the full video of the exchange, and ask us if we think it was used in a misogynistic manner? He then goes on to basically dismiss the issue as a distraction from the real problems. Crystal starts his tweet perfectly fine. He understood the context and why it was problematic. I really wish he had stopped there because then he also goes on to dismiss it as not a big issue. Why not ask women, you know, the primary targets of misogyny, if we think misogyny in politics is a big issue? Part of where my anger is coming from is I expect these sorts of comments from some people, but not from allies. I had a bunch of things I was just going to say about the tweets, but then David made a video about this, link in the description box. And I'm sorry, David, I love ya, but you gave me the perfect launching point as to why it's important to include women in discussions about women. Here's the clip David showed in his video. Why, why don't you come and, and, and join us to support the people of Ontario for once, rather than just sit there and criticize and criticize. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like listening to nails on a chalkboard listening to you. He then goes on to explain how the policy issues at hand were being ignored because of the focus put on this one benign comment. I don't totally disagree with him, but that's only half the story. Allow me to lady explain the other big issue at play. The problem with Doug isn't that he said something misogynistic, it's that he is a misogynist. 
Men who are misogynists use comments like this to shut women down when they can't win an argument based in principles, which is pretty much all the time because they don't have any. Here is what happened right after Doug said that phrase. I'm going to remind all members to make their comments through the chair, not directly across the floor. What was missed in the first video is the fact that Doug broke House protocols to direct his comment to Andrea Horbath, the leader of the opposition party, which is extremely disrespectful and adds to the notion this was misogynistic. David gives Andrea credit for what she said right afterwards in a press pool and mentions that she didn't seem to take it as a big deal at the time. Okay, everyone. Imagine if she had come out and said something along the lines of, I'm sick and tired of the sexist behavior on the floor. And if she showed the slightest bit of frustration in her voice or body language, what do you honestly think would have happened to her in that moment? I've been in that situation enough times to know we have no choice but to remain professional, even when our male counterparts are acting like children in a schoolyard. I've had to generalize behavior as inappropriate and say a person owes people in an apology when really what I wanted to say was that was sexist and he owes me an apology, but I can't because if I did, I'd be attacked. We must look like we're blowing it off or be accused of being thin skinned, not tough enough or too emotional. Another phrase that can be used to describe men and women at different times without being sexist, but is absolutely sexist when used as an attack towards women. David leaves it there and talks about how the media is blowing this phrase out of proportion and goes into policies that need work that are disproportionately affecting women. Again, I'm not disagreeing with him, but it's still just half the story. I'll pick up where he left off. Andrea later sends out this tweet. My message to women, don't let anyone try to tell you you don't belong at Queen's Park. I'm going to continue making positive proposals to give the people the help and hope they need to get through this pandemic. If Mr. Ford doesn't like hearing my positive proposals, too bad. In this tweet, she makes it clear this is an issue for women. Yeah, she sent it out later. Because as a woman, we need to think out how to word our replies so that they are professional and measured. We often don't have the luxury of replying honestly in the moment, a standard men don't have. I've been in the position where I've had to carefully word how I defend my perspective. And it can't just be okay or good. It had to be iron clad for me to be taken seriously. Men can just spout out whatever pops into their head and it will be considered. Women have to justify each and every single little detail or our entire argument will be dismissed. Part of the reason it has taken me so long to make this video is because of this. And it's not just this video, it's all of them. As a woman entering this field, I need to start at a higher standard if I have any hope of succeeding. If I make a major mistake now, I'm done. And the fact that I'm not pretty enough or slim enough are also factors that go against me that men don't have to deal with to the same extent. NDP MPP Catherine Fife also later sent out this tweet. These sexist moments in Ontario's legislature happen too often and make it very difficult to recruit women into politics. Exactly. It's not about Doug's one comment. It's about the systemic misogyny women deal with in politics. David says that he's worried that apolitical people won't want to get involved when all they see is this outrage over outrage, something I'll dig more into in a moment. Here's the thing. Most of them won't get involved, no matter what. If he or others can encourage people to plug in, fantastic, but he's missing a bigger problem. There are women who want to engage politically, but are discouraged when they see what happens to other women who step up and speak out. We need to be working on making it so that the people who want to engage politically can. We need to change our policies. David and Crystal have at different times mentioned that they feel one of the best ways for policies to change would be if more women got involved in politics. What's the number one thing holding us back? Misogyny. Don't believe me? 
read through the comments to any tweet related to this story or read through the comments to any tweet a female politician sends out. Then try telling me misogyny isn't a big problem. When these sorts of comments are dismissed and we are told we are overreacting, you're also dismissing all of the women who are rightfully outraged at the system. We're put into a corner. What are we supposed to do? Say nothing and be complicit in the normalization of this behavior or say something and be attacked for overreacting. If we don't call Doug out on his bad language, the people who want to use it are encouraged to do so and it makes a path for someone even worse to come into power and the good people who want to get involved won't. Okay, now back to my comment about outrage over outrage. I liken it to a phrase I use when talking about mental health. It's not about the spilt milk. You're out with someone and you spill a glass of milk. The other person then freaks out and starts yelling at you and is blowing it way out of proportion. You then focus on their reaction and tell them they're crazy, that it's no big deal, that, you know, it, it's just a glass of milk. And you're confused because you have no idea where this is coming from. It wasn't about the milk. There are other things that have been happening in that person's life that have been building up and maybe they have been dismissing it or maybe they weren't understanding that the pain they were feeling inside was near a breaking point. Then the milk spills and that's the last straw. It somehow validated what was happening to them and was further proof to the pattern of negativity that had been in their lives. So in that moment, out of nowhere, they explode and the core issues are never dealt with. Every time a politician gets off the hook for saying something misogynistic, it is compounded by the next and the next and the next until one day a very benign comment is made and some people have hit their breaking point and blow up. Others then focus on the overreaction to that one comment and blow that reaction out of proportion. It's the outrage over the outrage that's the problem. The way the media has turned this phrase into clickbait and the way some people are using it to further their own agenda does distract from the policies at hand and turns people off from the conversations that should be happening. It's kind of like if we're standing next to a forest fire and get in a fist fight over the best way to roast marshmallows. Meanwhile, there's a big freaking fire that needs to be dealt with. And misogyny might not be a big deal to some people, <coughs> men, but for me and other women, it's a big freaking deal that also needs to be addressed in this mess. So to make myself clear, it's not about that one comment. It's about the constant misogyny women endure in politics. It's about the double standards. It's about the former Minister of Environment and Climate Change, Catherine McKenna, and how she was nicknamed Climate Barbie, and when she spoke out against it, was torn apart. It's about Elbowgate, and how all the attention went to Justin Trudeau, the man of the story, while ignoring Ruth Ellen Brousseau and the brutal harassment she received for having the audacity for being in the way of his elbow. It's about the constant slights and unwanted touches. It's about being judged more on our appearance than our thoughts. It's about being told we should be at home with the children. It's about having to fight like hell to have the right to end a pregnancy and then having to fight like hell to keep that right. It's about doctors patting us on the head, telling us we're incapable of making big decisions about our bodies and refusing to make it so we can't have kids while practicing eugenics on other women. It's about how in far too many professions, we can gauge how successful we are based on the amount of rape threats we get. It's about how we have to take into consideration the amount of harassment we'll receive if we choose to step up, knowing some of us must be willing to bear the brunt of that harassment so others can follow. It's about how our issues are dismissed as not being important. It's about facing harsher consequences for making the exact same mistakes as men. It's about knowing we will be the targets of sexual and physical violence should we get into a place of influence. It's about how we are constantly referred to as girls instead of women. Don't think that's a problem? A quick social experiment. Spend the next week referring to all males as boys and see if you can make it through without feeling awkward or offending someone. It's about how when we talk about our traumas, we're not believed. It's about men telling us what we should be outraged about and telling us what our role in society is. It's about our male allies not bothering to ask our opinion or completely leaving us out of the conversations that are relevant to us. It's about how when we call men out on their bad behavior and language, we are told we can't take a joke and should smile more. 
Unlike what many privileged people think, language does matter because it is the first step down a path to having our rights taken away again. We need to call it out. Yes, Doug is bad for the province and his policies are horrendous. We are right there beside the men fighting for change. And at the exact same time, we are fighting against everything I just listed and more. Stateside, there are amazing women on political left YouTube shows speaking up. Women like Nomiki Konst, Anna Kasparian, Jamie Peck, Emma Vigelin, just to name a few. Like them or hate them, agree with them or not, we should admire them for having the strength to keep speaking their mind with all the harassment and barriers they face. I'm trying my best to start something this side of the border. I need your support to make this happen. Please help spread the word and encourage people to subscribe to my channel. Will this channel sink or swim? I don't know, it's too soon to tell. I have a good feeling about it, but I'm not known for my optimism, so that's a bit disconcerting. One thing I do know for sure is that if this channel doesn't make it, it won't be because of misogyny. I am entering this with my eyes wide open and I know what's coming my way should I become successful. I won't let that stop me. The message is too important. So to all the people who think their misogynistic attacks will shut me down, bring it. Cause this woman ain't gonna put up with your shit. Salut, à la prochaine. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. I'm Sandy, fighting to make your tomorrow better than your today.